Hello and welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries where if I do this right I should be able to zoom in on the action so the bike is substantially more together again. We have the gearbox back in situ and that's because as you can see here we finished the plate that holds the clutch release mechanism in and the uh, clevis that changes the gears. So uh, that's quite a bit of work in doing that. Well done, Mr. Bob. The gearbox is back in, the clutch is back on. The uh, chains are on, both of the chains are on because we wanted to check the clearance around this side of the gearbox. So where we've got this pin here, uh, this standoff to hold this plate that's got the clutch release mechanism. This is the thing that pushes the, the push rod to release the clutch. Um, that had to clear the chain. So we've got both chains on to make sure the tension is okay. We move the, the back wheel because the wheel spacers are now in, sorry, the sprocket spacers. Uh, that was all videoed a while ago. So um, at the moment, apart from having to manually select the gears, if the engine was running at this point, the bike would be able to propel itself down the road. The only job I've got to do is to put the, the diaphragm spring on the clutch, put the push rod in and then adjust the, the mechanism. Uh, of course, we need a clutch uh, cable. So the clutch cable we're planning to take from here up just around the outside of the chain here, up in the gap between the tank and then into the top of the frame and then drop out of the frame, probably where the... Um, fuel line pops out so it can go up to the bars. Not quite sure how easy it is to see that. So one of the things that I was just doing at the moment is putting the uh, spring diaphragm on this side of the clutch. And it's quite interesting because you don't see it very often. This is a special tool that comes with the spring diaphragm from Fair Spares in Norton. So you use the tool to um, put effectively the pressure on so that when it goes into the clutch basket you can then put the um, circlip around the outside then release the tension and then fit the part in the center uh, to adjust the position of the clutch not forgetting of course to include the um, silver steel bar that um, disengages the clutch. So that's where we're at at the moment. Um, I will finish the video when I have popped the spring in and got everything adjusted uh, and that will be a great update for today so a fair bit's gone on most of it's been worked by mr bob because i've had more important things to do like fetch decorations out of the loft so that in three weeks time we can put decorations back in the loft don't ask me why but that's something we do every year um, maybe someone could explain that to me. It's called Christmas, apparently. Don't know if you've heard of it. Right. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to drop the piece. I'm going to drop the uh, spring diaphragm on the clutch, and then uh, that will be the end of today's update. So stand by. And there we go. That is the clutch fitted. So with no, um, I haven't put the the piece on the end here because the clutch rod is slightly too long, so that um, if uh, I can't get the the piece on the end, because here's I. They activate the clutch this rod when the threaded nut is in will push the spring this way uh, when you activate the cable release mechanism which is great so it means the clutch is continually engaged so at the moment we're in neutral because both chains are going round but it's not trying to drive the engine if I find a gear in here just have to move the chain a bit to find the right spot so I can select the gear It's much easier to do when you've got two hands free, trust me. Right, we're in we're in gear, I think. Are we in gear? No, we're not, not quite in gear. Just bear with me one second. Ah, so much easier to do when you've got two hands free. So we're in gear. We're in uh, the first gear. We're oh, in top gear, sorry. Top gear with the sprocket on the front. So now when I move the back wheel, it will try and move turn the engine but of course i don't quite have the strength to do that what i can do though is press the uh, decompressor um, and energize the starter and with the bike in gear and the back wheel off the ground we should in theory see it all working there we go fantastic so 
that is the uh, final drive and both gears have been tested both gears work a little bit of alignment to do perhaps on the belt so that it doesn't wander off the center uh, but i'm really pleased with that so next step around the other side of the bike Round this side, well obviously there's a clutch cable and the routing of the clutch cable to work out. Um, and the other thing that uh, needs to be done around this side of the bike is to use the gear selector here um, to connect some kind of lever. So I need a pivot at the bottom, I need a lever to come up with the, uh, the gear knob on uh, and a short clevis between there and the gear lever so you can push the lever forwards and backwards to select first and second gear. Uh, I did buy a bit of steel to do that in but might be a little bit um, a little bit thick for a, for a gear lever and, uh, and if you've seen any of the other videos I've got that um, fighter pilot skull to go on the end so i've got a nice gear knob and then once the tank has come back from raw steel choppers and the tank's fitted i can make sure that this rod the gear rod doesn't foul the tank and when the seat is on i can sit on the bike and make sure it's in about the right place so um, it's quite a bit of work in doing all of this and bob's done most of it while i've been um, uh, busy elsewhere so well done mr bob um, but yeah, really good progress. I'm, I'm very chuffed with that. And I think I'm going to leave it there and uh, perhaps go have a little whiskey to celebrate. So that's it for now. As usual, thank you for watching. More updates will follow.